Good morning. It's a bright sunny day. We are a couple days away from the first kayak fishing trip, but today I'm going to show you how I'm planning on rigging up my Brooklyn Kayak Company FK13 kayak so that I can use a trolling motor as well as being comfortable while out on the water. So stick around, stay tuned, and don't burn the house down. At the end of my last video, I was pretty bent and pretty upset with the old Brooklyn Kayak Company because I was unable to get the rudder hooked up as well as the motor mount uh, didn't fit. So I was pretty upset. I emailed Brooklyn Kayak Company. It took them a day and a half to get back to me and they responded with a phone number that took me directly to one of their product specialists. It must've been his cell phone because I was able to text him as well. What he said is that the FK13 model, which is what I have here, is a brand new model. So they don't have any instructional videos out on it yet. And they're also having some issues with fitment. One of the issues that they're having, as I showed in my last video, is that the poles that go into this motor mount right here are too big. They're too big for the pole holders that are in there. So he offered to send me one that is a different model that actually uses the accessory rail right here. He said it will take up the entire accessory rail, but it'll mount the motor right here off your right hand side. The problem is my trolling motor is meant to go on the back of the boat. So if I were to situate it in front of me, the handle and the speed adjustment would be facing the opposite direction. That's a problem. Also, the battery is gonna be sitting back here, which means I'd have to run the cables the entire length of the kayak, which is kind of a pain. So what I did is I took the existing motor mount that they sent me. I used this crossbar here because it has these nice little divots in it where the trolling motor brackets go. And I just went down and got some PVC pipe that fit in the trolling motor mounts. So I cut the PVC, I was able to use all the hardware that they had sent me with the original one. And as you can tell, it fits. The only slight issue that I'm having with it is that when I put the trolling motor on this side, the weight of it will cause that end to rise up. So as a quick and simple remedy, I just took a piece of string, piece of rope, tied it to that tie down right there, stuck it right there. Now I can lean on this as much as I want and that doesn't come out. So. You know, a bit of redneck ingenuity here, but it's going to work. My second complaint was that the rudder system didn't work. These foot pedals here were stationary. You would lock them into place, and once you lock them into place, they didn't move. Well, what the guy told me is that you're supposed to remove these clips. Now, these clips are what adjust. They, they kind of sit down in here like this. And as you squeeze it, it will let you slide this forward back and then it will catch and that's your, your release. He said to use the rudder, all you have to do is pop these out. And I did. So I popped those out. I was able to position the rudder where I want it to be and I now have full rudder control with the foot pegs. The only drawback is I'm taller than this. Like my personal adjustment for these would put the pegs about right here because that's my height, but once I put them up here, it doesn't leave me any room to adjust the rudder with my foot. So I had to compromise and put them about halfway back. So now, if I drop the rudder down using the little pole guy here, try it. Okay, let's just say the rudder's down. It's most of the way down. I can now use the foot pedal here. Go this way. I swung the rudder that way. And if I pull this one over here, it swings the rudder back the opposite way, which is how a rudder is supposed to work. So the level of support from Brooklyn Kayak, you know, it, uh, it took him a while to get back to me, but he was able to tell me what I needed to know to get everything to work. Still not 100% thrilled with this design for the foot pedals. I think it's Kind of a busted design to be honest with you. I think they should have a secondary pedal that sits above your main footrest, like right here, that allows you to adjust the rudder. But whatever. So that is how I will be using the kayak. The rudder control works, the motor mount works. Now let's talk about batteries.
So I got this battery box off of Amazon. It's a trolling motor battery box. It lets you hook up your trolling motor to the front here. It also gives you USB charging and it gives you 12 volt DC charging like a cigarette lighter here. I love this box because when I'm on the kayak, I'll be able to use the trolling motor as well as charging my phone or charging up my GoPros when I need to. So I thought that was gonna be awesome. So to fit in there, you can use really any size battery that you want, but I was looking for something with maximum amp hours. My initial choice was this guy. Again, Amazon find. This is a 100 amp hour sealed lead acid AGM battery. Sealed lead acid AGM batteries are deep cycle batteries, which are nice because you can discharge them up to 80% maximum, which means you get 80 usable amp hours out of the battery. The problem is that should be your maximum case uh, as opposed to your everyday. And you should really keep it between like 50 and 60% discharge, which gives you 50 to 60 amp hours. The other problem is this thing is freaking heavy. Now in the description, it said it was 60 some pounds, which I didn't think was gonna be a big deal because the kayak can hold 550 pounds. So I thought, well, me plus this battery, plus all my rigging, I'm still gonna be well 100 pounds shy of what this thing is gonna be uh, maxed out at. But actually lifting this thing up is a totally, totally different animal. So for illustration purposes here, I brought my scale out. Oh my gosh. And that thing is every bit of 64 pounds. Well, this is gonna be mounted behind my seat right there in the little cubby. So that's gonna concentrate a lot of weight right in the middle of the boat right there. I don't have any option to put it up front because in the hatch up there, it just won't fit. The hatch isn't deep enough. So my only option for mounting the battery really is right here. And 64 pounds in this compact of a, of a structure, it's, it's just too much. So my other option was this. Lithium ion phosphate or Life Po 4. This is a relatively new uh, battery technology. However, if you know much about batteries, you know that the advantage of a Life Po 4 is that A, you can discharge it to 100% repeatedly without killing it. So that means my 80 amp hour battery has actual 80 amp hours of usable energy in there. This 100 amp hour battery has realistically 60 to 70 usable amp hours before I risk damaging the battery. Also, you can discharge this thing thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Fully discharge, fully charge. It's gonna last you forever. And then the other and the greatest thing about this battery, it's light. I mean, real light. 63 pounds for the old battery. This guy tips the scale at 22. That is 41 pounds different and it shows 41 pounds different in about the same size form factor it will fit comfortably into my case here and it's going to shave 41 pounds off of my boat weight now i will tell you the cost of the agm battery was 200 some dollars and the tracker lithium was 6.99 at cabela's there are several lithium ion phosphate batteries on Amazon that you can get for cheaper for the same capacity. You can get them sub 500 bucks for an 800 amp hour battery, and you can get some even cheaper than that. But this one is a rely on battery, which is one of the name brands. And that's one of the things I was kind of going for when it comes to safety, stability, warranty. I mean, I really don't want this thing to blow up on the back of my kayak. So tracker lithium from Cabela's, uh, it's hopefully going to be a great battery for me, but it shaves 40 pounds out of the kayak and that is a huge win. So now let's talk about how we're gonna mount up the trolling motor. The trolling motor that I'm using on the kayak is nothing special. It's a Minn Kota Endura C2. It is a five speed forward, three speed reverse. It's a uh, handle, there you go. Twist the handle here to get the speed that you want, what direction you're going, manual turn, et cetera, et cetera. No foot pedal control, all done right here, which is fine because it'll be right behind me. Plug it into my battery box, which has my trolling motor into it, or my trolling motor battery into it. Turn the knob. Hey, look at that. And we have speed. Seems easy, easy enough, right? Well, yes and no. The problem with this guy is that it has five speeds going forward. 
But let's say you need a speed that's somewhere in between one and two. Well, you're kind of stuck because you don't have many options. The other problem is this cheap motor, which is about a hundred bucks brand new, uh, it, it uses resistance in the actual motor itself in order to get the speeds that you're looking for. Now, I'm gonna save you all the technical jargon. What this comes down to is that it's a huge waste of energy. It actually uh, generates a ton of heat down in the, the prop down on the, the base of the motor. And that heat is just burning off energy because it has to use that to regulate your speed controls. Some of the more expensive motors that have um, like a direct drive or something where you have unlimited control, they are much more efficient. But this guy will definitely, uh, it'll kill your battery in, in pretty record time just because of how energy inefficient it is. But there is a cure for that. And I'm gonna show you that right now. This is a pulse wave modulator. Now this handy little device, what it does is it adjusts the amount of electricity that goes to a DC motor based on how, how, how fast you want it to go basically. So this little knob right here, when you turn it off, there's no energy that flows into the motor. You turn it on and it, it literally has infinite speeds at which it sends electricity to the motor. What you do is you hook the trolling motor into this, you hook this into your battery, and then you set your trolling motor to maximum speed. What this little unit does is it adjusts your speed from here. And it says, okay, at the low setting, I'm only going to give you short bursts of electricity. And that short burst of electricity will give you a slower speed. Now, bear in mind, these bursts are still happening several thousand per second. So as a user, all you have is slower speed on the motor. Well, as you turn this up, it sends those bursts faster and faster and faster and faster and faster until you're almost at a continuous uh, when you're at 100%. This infinite control only sends electricity when you need it. It's not always on. This motor is basically always on even if you're in the first speed setting, it's, it's wasting tons and tons of energy. What this does is it only draws the energy that you need to maintain that speed, basically turning this trolling motor into a much more expensive model that gives you not only infinite speed control, but much, much more energy efficiency. So we're gonna hook this guy up. It has your forward and reverse. It has a little gauge here that shows you what percentage you're at or what speed you're at, basically one to 100. And then it has the little knob. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this unit inside a little waterproof container here, which I'll mount inside the kayak. I'll run the cords into it. I'll hook it up and then we'll try it out. So the first thing that I did, this is the wire that comes off the trolling motor. I snipped the wire so that I can use the second half of it and then I'm going to install a quick disconnect. This will allow me to easily uh, connect it and disconnect it if I need to remove the motor while leaving the PWM in the unit or leaving it in the kayak, or I can take it all apart. But I don't want this to all be hardwired into one piece. Uh, in the event, maybe I wanna use this later on down the road on my boat and I don't want the PWM, I can just put this back on. So I'm gonna install this little quick connect. All right, so first couple steps complete. I have the quick disconnect going to the trolling motor. I have the other half of the quick disconnect going into the motor portion of the PWM. We can get a zoom in there. There we go. This motor positive negative. So I've got those hooked into here as well. So now I can just hook the trolling motor in whenever I want, remove it whenever I want. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So step two is going to be to wire up the rest of this wire to the battery. Should be pretty straightforward, kind of the same rules apply. So we use the rest of this wire to put it to the battery. Okay, so check this out. I've got the quick disconnect going from the battery to a quick, I'm sorry, to a quick disconnect right here, which goes into the pulse wave modulator. I've got a quick disconnect coming out of there, which runs over to the trolling motor. And when it's all hooked up, you flip this little button here to on. 
This little screen right here displays your speed. And this little knob is what controls it. So you can probably hear the motor revving up. And you have infinite speeds available. I'm gonna go in reverse, flip this little switch the opposite direction, turn it back on. Now you go in reverse. Infinite speeds. How cool is that? Now, how do we get this thing in the kayak? All right, I get it. I'm editing the video right now. I realize that I keep saying infinite speeds. There's infinite speeds available when that little display clearly shows that there are 100 settings that that thing can go into between one and 100. And that's not infinite. I promise, I'm good at math. But I've been going through some stuff, so leave me alone. <laughs> infinite speeds, I'm an idiot. All right, so I just got the PWM finished. Uh, I've got some silicone in it that needs to cure, but check this thing out. I'm pretty excited. So this is the finished product. It's just a little Sterilite container that I got from Fleet Farm. Got some holes in the top, but check this thing out. So this is forward. Turn the knob. You can hopefully hear the motor running down here. Turn all the way down, go reverse. How awesome is that? I've got the, the quick disconnects running into the bottom of the little container here. And I'm, I'm gonna put some silicone around this so that it's sealed up. But otherwise, this little thing is pretty much done. I'm gonna let it sit for a while so that the silicone that I have on here cures, dries all the way, and then I'm gonna mount it with Velcro to uh, the kayak kind of underneath my seat. That's my goal. So I'll show you that next once this cures. There it is. All done and ready to get on the water. So I said redneck ingenuity at its finest and I truly meant it. <laughs> So there is my pulse wave modulator. I have it Velcroed right next to me here. So I can pop this off for a transport. All the wires will run underneath my seat. The quick disconnects go down there really nice. Everything else will connect right down there. Trolling motor is mounted to the side. When I used the PVC for these legs of the motor holder, uh, they were not big enough to hold my rods. So I actually had to get some bigger PVC pipe dig into my nuts and bolts bin and kind of screw that on there so that I now have full size rod holders. But I think it looks pretty good. I think it's pretty functional. My lightweight battery is sitting in the back powering the whole thing. I can run some USB cables off there if I need to charge some phones or some GoPros or whatever it may be. I still have room back here for tackle box. Very loud truck going by, thanks for that. I'll probably keep most of, my, most of my tackle right here in that bin because that's really nice and close and handy, as well as water, snacks, whatever else. I have my life jacket stored up here in the front. Anything else I might need, I'll throw up there as well. So there she is. She is ready for the open water. What do you think of my uh, redneck engineering with the pulse wave modulator and the the mounting bracket for the motor and all that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments what you like or what you hate, what you do differently, or if you have any questions about what I did on here. I will take this out on the water in the coming days. Definitely grab the GoPros with me and we'll, we'll see how she goes. But for now, thank you very much for watching and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. <laughs> have a great day.